Yellow clip blocking in the house in my road. Gotta make it put it on. She don't like wearing clothes. Just left Concord, no Carolina. I was licking on booty in the whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. She remember you. Ice cube making chips. She ever like the way do. Do see me with the crew. I done get some food. I see you looking like you do. Had to make a move, make a move. When bullies get beat by the underdog, okay? So now, this was a crit, okay? Dude was a crit from Queens. Um, Had a lot of respect, earned his respect, especially in Rikers Island, Rikers Island adolescence, you know, because everyone knows, everyone knows, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to live for crips, you know what I'm saying? Like, if a crip make it to a high status in Rikers Island adolescence, he earned that. He earned that through a lot of pain, you know what I'm saying? Through a lot of violence, a lot of getting jumped and holding it down, you know what I'm saying? But um, this particular situation, I'm going to say this was told to me by my friend. I'm going to use a made-up name. I'm going to say his name is Dave, okay? So Dave was my man. We were in the same crib. We was in three upper together, okay? So me and Dave, you know, as an excuse to get out the house, the house, I mean, the cell house that we're in, uh, we would go to Law Library. Now, Law Library, before, before, um, I believe after I left Rikers Island, they stopped letting people wear regular clothes as well as regular sneakers, which they stopped doing that, the sneakers part when I was in Rikers Island. But up to that point, people would use every excuse they could to leave the house and just be fly put their little earrings, fake earrings in their ear, right? Put on their polo shirt and their true religions and use any excuse. That's a visit or that's going to Law Library. So me and Dave, we in Law Library. We just mingling, you know, we kicking it, saying what's up to the older dudes that work in Law Library. Or you plan to meet up with other people who you cool with. Maybe they got a couple snacks for you. Maybe, maybe you in the business of exchanging drugs and dealing drugs and you're going to make a deal. Or for the blood, for the bloods, they were, you know what I'm saying, going to have their little powwows, their little meetings and stuff like that. Now, in Law Library, me and Dave come across this guy now. This guy, I'm gonna say his name was Bishop. I guess, yeah, Bishop. So Bishop was this crip from Queens. Now, like I said, he earned his respect, all of that. But Bishop was a D-head. Um, he was very arrogant. He was a vicious bully. He terrorized, he terrorized anyone that would allow him. You know, um, he, he, he was an ass. You know, he was an asshole, you feel me? Um, this was one of those people who just rubbed me the wrong way, even though I never personally knew what I said his name was going to be, Bishop. Even though I didn't personally know Bishop, I knew of him. Like, I ain't going to lie, his name rang bells. He put in a lot of pain. Um, most of it was him picking on people that was smaller than him that he knew he could uh, get over on, you know. He's one of those people to where... If you're somebody like me and you're not trying to be a tough guy, you're not necessarily trying to be a bully. These are the type of people who they're around you and you're like, you're saying to yourself, yo, man, he's he's a clown. Like you could watch him be raided and belittle somebody and be disrespectful to somebody, and you'll be saying to yourself, yo, I wish he would come at me with that. I'ma spank him right here. Right here in Law Library, you know what I'm saying? So that's basically what the situation is. Me and Dave, we just watching him and we just telling ourselves that. We like, yo, if he come over here with that, we just going to the box. It's going up. We spanking him, right? I'm like, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Because me personally, I wasn't in no gang. So I already knew anybody who I fight is likely in a gang and all the other stuff that could come with that. But I'm like, hey, I stay out the way. Whatever's meant to happen is going to happen. Nobody going to disrespect me, though. You know? Feel me? Now, Dave, I mean, not Dave. Bishop was being Bishop. Now, how the story goes is that Dave, who was my boy from 3 Upper, he gets moved to the same house as Bishop. Now, Dave was not soft. Dave was official. Now, Dave moves to this house, to this new house where Bishop 
is already on the team. He's already a high-ranking game member. He's on the team and everything. Dave moves from three upper to this house. Now, all of this that I'm talking about is within months of us going to law, law library, seeing Bishop there, being who he was, and us thinking about that. So really, nobody really like thinking about Bishop. But it was just ironic that Dave ends up getting moved to the same house as him, and he gets a high-ranking position as well, like he already had in three upper, which is a team spot. But like I said, Dave is a wholesome dude. He a good dude. He's not all the way with the um, the oppression of our own people and stuff like that anyway because he was a Muslim. He was a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Like, he came into jail a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was raised like that. Like, his father was Aki, you know what I'm saying? So, but, you know, here's who he is. You know, yes, he was in the gang, all that, all that. But we were keeping in contact with each other. And I just remember... We would send Kais back and we'd be talking about what's going on in all these and all these different houses and stuff like that. And and he would just talk about how Bishop was in the house with him. You know what I'm saying? And and like I said, we talk about that within the kites or we run into each other at Law Library, stuff like that. And he'd be like, yo, this thing is annoying. He is annoying. He know the right people to pick on. You know what I'm saying? He don't do that to nobody that's tough. Or might be tough, you know what I'm saying? He's like, one day, he gonna pick on the wrong damn nigga, and he gonna get the brakes beat off him. I'm like, yeah, word, copy, copy. You know what I'm saying? And just like that, let's say maybe two weeks, two weeks after that, I have court with Dave. So, regular court day, I know I'm getting remanded. He know he getting remanded, you know what I'm saying? But he ends up talking to me. We in court. The first thing he said to me when we was in the pens before we even left Rikers Island to go to, you know what I'm saying, Bronx Court. He tells me, hey, yo, guess what happened to Bishop? I'm like, he finally got smoked, didn't he? Yeah, I'm like, who was it? Such and such? I'm naming like other tough dudes in the crib. I'm naming the dudes that got the crib. I'm like, who was it? This dude, that dude, that dude? He like, nah, it was a day room nigga. I'm like, a day room nigga? I'm like, how? He was like, yeah, so, so Bishop was just being disrespectful doing his regular Bishop thing, you know, you know how, you know how dudes on the team, when they want a day room nigga to get off the phone, they might rush him off the phone or they might hang up their phone call. I'm like, yeah. He like, yo, so, well, first, before I even get into what happened, I got to explain what it is, like. Put into your mind the type of phones that I'm talking about. These is like the old school phones. These is the late 80s, early 90s type of telephones we got in Rikers Island, or we had in Rikers Island. The old ones with the long curly cord and, and you hold it like this, right? And it'd be like this. And it's real, real hard. Like it's like, it's made out of like some real hard like porcelain or plastic type of thing, right? Imagine how hard and heavy that is. Now keep that in mind for the rest of the story. So Dave tells me, he like, yeah, so a new day room dummy had came into the crib. He wasn't asking for no trouble. He came in, he was sitting down, all that, minding his business, you know, minding his business. Um, He asked permission to use the phone and call his mom. Now, his mom, you know, she had like, like kidney issues, stuff like that, stuff like that, you know? And he like, why he on the phone with his mom? Bishop start coming around, acting like a dingling. He like, yo, hey, day room dummy, get off the phone. You got five minutes, this, that, and the third, this, that, and the third. But the dude was using a collect call. Collect calls is 15 minutes. So the new dude, he only been on the phone about five minutes. And he trying to check on his mom, you feel me? So in the process of that, while he on the phone talking to his mom, as Dave told me, Bishop comes and he hangs up the phone. He presses like that button. Y'all know that button. That button that automatically hangs up the phone call. Right? He's slipping though. He presses the button, ends the dude's phone call. And Dave tells me that he just seen a whole like devil type energy come out of the new dude and the new dude took the phone 
And he said, yo, that was my mom, yo. You crazy? And then bashed him mad hard with the phone in his nose one time. Bing! Cracked it. Blood start falling immediately. Puddle of blood immediately. And then the dude just start bashing him over the top of his head with the phone. Bing, bing, bing. Start breaking him up. Of course, you know, dudes from the team, people jumped in. They spanked the new dude, but the damage was already done. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and what the word was was that they came, they they sent, they sent um, they sent the new dude to the box. They got Bishop, took him to the infirmary. They basically said that he broke his nose with the phone. So the bully got his nose broke with the phone by hanging up another man's phone call who was checking on his sick mother. And because he was being a dingaling, and because he was trying to be a bully and push someone around, he got his nose broke with the phone. And that's what Dave was telling me. He like, yo, man, they took him to the infirmary and then took him to the hospital last night. Last night, it got bad. He got embarrassed. He got embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? And just like that, the day room dummy that did that, his name started going up. He had, he ran into some beef after that. But I would say overall, this same dude we talking about who did that to Bishop, he basically became a real nigga after that. Because when the situation happened, he was only on Rikers Island for probably like a week, week and a half. But after he turned up like that, he said, you know what? I might as well be a savage. And he was a savage for the rest of his time there. This is a lesson for all you dudes that want to be bullies, you know what I'm saying? You never want to upset the wrong person. You don't know what type of day that person is having. You know, someone could kill you for playing around like that, you know? I feel like, you know, Bishop was a clown. He got what he deserved.